Hi, my name is Brandy. I'm with Allied Health Career Training, and today we're going to go over centrifuging and aliquoting. But before we do anything, definitely want to make sure we get our personal protective equipment on. You typically want to wear a lab jacket or you could do a disposable gown. Always going to want to make sure that you don some gloves anytime you're about to come in contact with any form of blood. Always wear gloves. Now in this process, we really might need to protect ourselves a little bit more. You kind of want some sort of barrier because there could be some splashing involved. Also, we're going to want to protect our eyes. Kind of depends on the facility about how much you're going to have to down and also how comfortable you are. For laboratory testing purposes, we need to make sure that we preserve our blood. So we add additives to our tubes. Some tubes have an anticoagulant in them. Some tubes have a clotting factor. So let's talk a little bit about anticoagulants. Coagulation means to clot. Anticoagulant means not to clot. So it's kind of a blood thinner. Most of us are very familiar with whole blood. As phlebotomists, that's what we take out of the body, whole blood. If we add an anticoagulant to the blood, that leaves it in its whole form. Sometimes we have to transform this blood. If we do that with an anticoagulant, we're going to turn it into plasma. And that's when we use our centrifuge. If we put a specimen that has anticoagulant in it into the centrifuge, and what the centrifuge is going to do is spin it really fast, about 2,500 rounds per minute, then the red blood cells, because they're so heavy, they're probably the largest cells in the blood. They're going to fall to the bottom, and what's going to be left on top is plasma. Now, we know that blood will clot naturally. If it didn't, any time that we cut ourselves, we would just bleed out and continue to bleed. So if we allow blood to clot or add a clotting factor to it, then we centrifuge, what's going to be happen is serum will transform. This is usually what they're going to want to test, serum or plasma. Okay? For hematology purposes, we could still test whole blood. Now how we go about doing this is we're going to use a centrifuge. This process can take anywhere from a minute to 15. Really depends on your centrifuge, how old it is, and what it recommends. The big thing about centrifuge that you have to remember and recall is to always balance. So if you're going to put a specimen in it, you're going to want to put another one across. Now say you only have one specimen, well water is about the same weight as blood. So all you have to do is take and make sure that you put water about the same fill line as the other blood and then you're going to latch the lid, you're going to turn it on. Some centrifuges require a timer, some will automatically stop. Just really depends, again, on how old your centrifuge is. Now, once you take your specimen out, the transformation has begun. The thing that we have to worry about, though, is we can't leave plasma and serum on our red blood cells. We have to do what's known as aliquoting. Because once you leave these on there, that starts to change the blood. It starts to change the plasma. It starts to change the serum. Now, some tubes have this really cool factor to them, and it's a gel barrier, which is really going to be helpful when you're doing aliquoting. Let me show you. See how there's a gel barrier here? Well, what happens once you centrifuge those red blood cells, pull it up to the middle and it will separate your serum and your red blood cells. These tubes are kind of known as serum separator tubes. You can also have a plasma separator tube. 
Not all tubes are equipped with that. If you notice, this pink one is not. Now, when we start the process of aliquiding, that means we're just going to pull off that liquid portion of that blood. We're going to put it into a transfer tube. You're going to want to make sure that you take the lid off your transfer tube. Okay. You're going to want to take the lid off of your specimen. We're going to use what's known as a pipette. Kind of looks like an eyedropper. You're going to want to squeeze the bulb of the pipette. You're going to go down into the liquid portion as much as possible without touching the red blood cells. If by chance you suck up red blood cells with your plasma, you've just compromised your specimen. And unfortunately, you'll have to start over by collecting a whole new one. Now, if you're really good, you won't get any air bubbles. And then we're just going to drizzle it down the side. You want to make sure you don't force the plasma into the tube. Okay? Definitely want to put your pipette in a red biohazard bag or trash can. Now, this specimen has to have two identifiers. You're going to want to transfer that information onto your transfer tube because you cannot send this to a lab or leave it unlabeled. Also, you definitely want to make sure you mark it plasma or serum, because if you notice, there's not a lot of difference between the two in looks. Plasma and serum look very, very similar. And your lab technicians are gonna to need to know the difference. All right. This is Brandy with Allied Health Career Training. Thank you guys so much.